Stratigraphy is a discipline of the science of geology concerned with the succession and age relationships of stratified rock. Since stratification is inescapable in sedimentary rocks, but less easily recognized in igneous and metamorphic rocks, this slideshow deals mainly with sedimentary strata. A basic premise of stratigraphy is the law of superposition. Unless it is overturned, a stratum above another is younger than the one on which it lies. But there are many more relationships between rock strata, all of which are named by a specialized terminology. Very important is the degree of continuity in the deposition of successive strata. The sketch shows all the possibilities. Discrete kinds of strata called formations, more about them later, are conformable when they succeed each other with no appreciable interruptions in deposition. They are disconformable when successive strata with the same dip and approximate strike are laid down, but there is a hiatus between them, a period of time during which sedimentation ceased. In the sketch, the effects of possible subsequent erosion are greatly exaggerated, but are more realistically depicted on this one. Even without erosion, a short break in sedimentation results in hardening or bioturbation of the exposed surface. And in limestones, sometimes karstic phenomena develop. An unconformity exist where there are differences in the dip or strike of the strata above and below the hiatus. The folding and subsequent removal of some of the underlying beds are obviously indicative of a time of erosion much longer than that usually associated with a disconformity. The term nonconformity is sometimes used when the unconformity is between ancient plutonic or massive metamorphic rocks that were deeply eroded before deposition of much younger sediments began. This sketch and the two following charts demonstrate the concepts involved in a relatively new approach to stratigraphic correlation called sequence stratigraphy. This relatively new discipline requires the recognition of levels called flooding surfaces that are coincident with maximum transgressions and regressions of the sea. The flooding surfaces mark a change in the grain size and sometimes in the nature of the sediment being deposited. As shown on this slide, its users employ a glossary of terms of which the initial letters are used to name the surfaces recognized. Sequence stratigraphy serves mainly for correlation of strata throughout a sedimentary basin. The flooding surfaces that bound a sequence are the result of eustatic rises and falls in sea level with tectonic uplift or subsidence also a factor. Groups of sequences comprise a static cycle, now correlated worldwide. Cycles range in length from more than 50 million years for a first order cycle to less than 10,000 years for a fifth order cycle, the product of fluctuations in glaciation. Sequence stratigraphy is widely used in exploration for petroleum and as shown on this slide from a published paper colored triangles are used to depict the sequences and their limits the official categorization of the several elements of sequence stratigraphy is still under discussion but the probable outcome is indicated on this repeated summary of the more widely used of its term. Recognition of sequence boundaries must be preceded by the differentiation of the lithologic units that together 
constitute a succession of rocks. Since its earliest days, this process of discrimination has been the basic element, the foundation stone of stratigraphy. The fundamental unit is the formation, which may be combined into groups or subdivided into members. A formation must be identifiable everywhere by a distinctive lithology. It may consist of but one kind of sediment or display two or more alternations of lithology or even have a characterizing heterogeneity. Its thickness may be less than a meter or range up to several thousand meters. It must be mappable and if its aerial extent is considerable, its boundaries in different localities may vary slightly in relation to time. A formation is commonly named according to its dominant lithology, often supplemented by a, a geographic location. Maro Shale, Potsdam Sandstone, Shakopee Dolomite, Morrison Formation. This information is common on geologic maps and sometimes is found on columnar well sections. As this chart shows, lithologic entities are also pigeonholed into a set of units that served as a measure of relative elapsed time before the greater precision of isotopes was discovered. Called chronostratigraphic time, this universally used time rock concept is based on the stratigraphic ranges of fossil species and genera. The basic unit is a stage. A stage is defined by the vertical range, that is, the appearance and disappearance of a species, or spans an interval marked by several species in the evolution of a genus. It may span less than one or involve several formations and occupy an interval of time that is not coincident with formation boundaries. In some places, the actual number of years included in a stage can be determined by a count of varv. So stage, series, and system establish a time scale independent of, but correlatable with, the more accurate measurements of a geochronologic time. Here is a list of the names of the stages of the Mesozoic era, together with an indication of their source, usually a geographic location that was the site of the sequence in which the stage was defined that many of these sites are now replaced by reference to a locality with a more complete representation of the defining characteristics of the stage. As illustrated on this chart, the sites so selected are called golden spikes. Each spike indicates that a geographic location that best illustrates the stage limit marker has been chosen. These global stratigraphic sections and points define the base of a stage by the lowest occurrence of the fossil of a species of animal. Conodonts predominate as markers throughout the Paleozoic and Triassic. They are the jaws of a relatively recently discovered small eel-like animal. Ammonites define the lower limit of most of the remainder of the Mesozoic. They are cephalopod mollusks related to the existing squids and octopi. Planktonic foraminifera, protozoans with perforated limestone shells, along with magnetic anomalies related to spreading centers, dominate many of the GSSP of the Cenozoic era. The 10 minute limit looms close. Just now, biostratigraphy was touched on very briefly, and chemical and magnetic stratigraphy have scarcely been mentioned. Part two has lots more about how 
stratigraphy is studied and used.